So I hit the record button, and now, now what? A and Soul with a very freeform video, as I sometimes do. And today I wanted to talk about positive things. And I'm not quite sure how to phrase it. Like, I guess I want to, I, I, I want to talk about like the cool things that have come out from Shadowlands, but that's not exactly the right way to phrase it. I apologize. Again, very freeform. We're kind of brainstorming this together. Um, yeah, I want to come up with the sort of energy of, you know, what what are the good things that came out? Maybe not exactly from Shadowlands, the expansion, but just things that happened to come out from the WoW team, thanks to that expansion. Something like that. I'm going to do my best to try and section this off into, you know, different things so you guys and girls know exactly sort of what it is that I'm talking about. Uh, but I want to come off with this as a, uh, hey, here's what we have to look forward to. Here's what uh, we can be like, hey, you know, Shadowlands wasn't so bad because such and such happened. So let's go with that. I think Shadowlands marks a point uh, for, for the WoW team where they have started to uh, listen and respond more. Now, maybe it's not like they respond in in like the best ways or that they respond as frequently as they should but i definitely feel like with shadowlands that they've done just like a little bit more of it you know it seems like they're listening to things like for example in a in a week or so we're going to get the mage tower permanently now this no i guess when we look back Blizzard announced, hey, we're going to bring back the Mage Tower. And we're like, yeah, they're listening. Woo. But then they're like, OK, here's how it's going to work. And we're like, oh, no, that's very controversial. And so there's been a lot of back and forth on that. Lots of feedback from uh, from everybody, including me, uh, that having that sort of frequency just doesn't work. And now we're going to see that uh, kind of kind of work out. And that's great. You know, I also think of how Shadowlands was first received. Uh, especially with regards to like covenant switching and how that had a, a whole lot of friction to it and you know that had a lot to do with you know ian coming out and saying hey we want to give players like a meaningful choice uh, we definitely answered that mandate with uh, mostly a resounding nah we don't want that sort of choice i mean we get it i think now we we're kind of understanding what it is that blizzard was trying to communicate when they wanted to, you know, have us have something that felt like really meaty and meaningful when we make, you know, this fateful choice. But at the same time, from a gameplay standpoint, uh, that quickly gave way to, you know, things like balance and uh, balance and what have you. Even the coverage of leak seasons that I've been doing, they've strongly asserted that, hey, we're cool with covenants as in terms of, hey, let's make a choice and choose a team, but the choices are largely going to be. Uh, just cosmetic in nature that they're not going to have a big impact on gameplay and even if they did then we'd be able to freely switch back and forth similar to what we have now and thankfully and now with everything that has come from 915 and being able to switch around and unlocking all sorts of transmog here and there uh i feel like we're definitely seeing uh results from well, basically all of our feedback of course it's not Perfect. People have been asking for a solo sort of queue, and it is coming, or it is kind of here. Uh, but it, as we're in the kind of rehearsal stage of the solo shuffle feature, uh, you know, people are giving their feedback. It's it's a bit mixed, but largely, uh, again, it you know, Blizzard is going in the right direction. They're just being extremely conservative about some of the moves that they make, knowing that once you make these sorts of moves, there's no turning back. Which also leads to, again, you know, with them listening, now we're getting, or I'm sorry, soon we're going to get cross faction stuff. We're gonna get, like, we're going to get Horde and Alliance folks uh, playing together. It, just this part alone, it's like, oh, Shadowlands is gonna be pretty memorable because this is, it's when a lot of things just started to happen. They're listening. They're responding. Uh, with with far more agility than they have in the past and without the kind of aloofness or the sort of air of superiority that some folks have uh, tried to project upon them. I think Shadowlands uh, kicked off uh, the start, 
maybe it's the start. Uh, it kicked off the start and definitely not the end of what is probably going to be like a very big account wide thing that's going to happen. I, I, I talked about it like way back, like, hey, you know, this, something like this might happen where they're going to do like like really big things um, that will make things feel account wide. Although at the moment, you know, right now we're kind of at the beginning stages of it. Like we saw that they were very, that uh, the watch team was very proactive on this with the threads of fate. Like, hey, here we go. You do this one thing. You're not going to have to do it again on your other characters if you don't want to. However, that sort of mandate was extremely inconsistent. I mean, we had, oh, shucks, we had uh, not conquests. Uh, we had valor upgrades that were like put in like mid mid season. Uh, those were put in and hey, if you get KSM during season one, all your characters can get the, the KSM season one upgrades or whatnot. But then in seasons two and three, that wasn't really a thing. And you know that sort of inconsistency was uh, was pretty disappointing to people. But again, the takeaway is that they're try is that they seem to be moving towards that. Actually, I can think of more examples. Um, Covenant, actually, for uh, Covenant cosmetics, you're able to be on like let's say a plate wearing character and you're able to buy a whole bunch of different cosmetics from that plate wearing character even if it's not plate and that's because of a, a of a fix that was put in sometime during this expansion where they changed cosmetics from things that you have to put on to things that you can just click and then it just goes into your wardrobe so going back going back to this example you, know, you buy something you buy a, a piece of cloth gear on your plate wearing character and it's flagged as cosmetic you use it on that character boom you learn it and now your all your cloth wearing characters can learn those things again though it's it's inconsistent across the covenants there might be a lot of things that are available to buy that would be kind of considered like you know unlockable account wide however uh, not everything uh, again not everything is consistent like the path of ascension stuff uh, those all come in the form of ensembles, which are not, you, you, you cannot learn it. You, you can't just learn everything on one character. However, for the Venthyr folks, all of those pieces of gear are a la carte, and you are able to buy those things. So again, very inconsistent. We've seen Ma and Corthia upgrades. Um, once you're able to, once you hit a certain reputation threshold, all your characters are now able to buy those things. So they still need to get their research or whatever it is but they no longer have to do that that long ass grind in order to get those you know those said items but again very inconsistent it has uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the next expansion will uh give us some sort of you know it'll make it just much easier to understand as for how far it goes uh hard to say um i don't know if it's gonna go as far as hey we're gonna have account wide everything we're gonna have account wide item level account wide gear uh, you know, you do things once and you just get showered with with, with like everything. I don't know how far it's going to go, but there's all there's an obvious extreme on one end. And then there's what we've been experiencing for a while. And I have a feeling that the needle is going to move towards that kind of more desirable end. But as for how far, uh, you know, of course, we, we can't say. But I think that's overall, that's mostly a sign not exactly of blizzard giving in but more like just the sign of the changing times and the and the changing player demographic and how the demographic behaviors have changed some of us have just become less patient and i think uh finally the wow team is starting to notice that uh, and more importantly take action based on that i like the great vault uh i think the great vault was kind of a winner for this expansion uh compared to uh, the chest of whatever that we had to open somewhere in Dazar lore, and then there's another chest that we had to open at the bottom of Dazar lore, and then I think there was something else that I don't remember. Uh, but I think the Great Vault, uh, for a, for a first iteration, especially here in 9.2, I think it was kind of a banger, my opinion. I think it worked out. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not the type who wanted to fill out all nine squares to get, like, the maximum number of choices and especially in 9.2 that's ideal because of the advent of tier pieces and how that's come back and you know that's another cool thing that's come out from this expansion the return of tier gear and all the drama that would come from uh tier gear so sidebar uh things uh changing like loot systems you know that obviously hasn't changed and 
um, it, it, there's no telling if the team is going to feel be responsive to uh, any major shifts to that. Uh, uh, that is anything less than an expansion level. So we'll have to see in about a month or so if we're going to see if there are going to be any significant changes. But going back to the Great Vault, uh, it's cool because it offered a very easy to understand checklist of stuff to do. You want the loots? Cool. Just do a couple of things and like, there you go. You want more loot or more choices? Cool. Go ahead and do all these things and you'll maximize the number of choices. Oh, your choices sucked? Cool. Take our consolation prize and you can choose from any of these, you know, mostly useless, but, but maybe useful thing that'll feel a little bit better than uh, what there was before. So having something like that has been uh, you know, seeing it evolve a little bit throughout this expansion has been pretty helpful. I definitely feel like even for a three season expansion, uh, that solo people, so, you know, so-called casual folks, uh, that they're the winners here. Uh, I think that they have been giving, they've been given the most activities to do, uh, the most stuff to farm for out of like any expansion. You could almost combine several expansions and you know, smash them all together and be like, dude, like, look at all the things that you can do. Not everyone likes everything. Not everyone loved uh, the Path of Ascension. I, I, to me, that was like my mage tower. To me, that was a lot of fun. Um, it was buggy. There were problems with it. Absolutely. Uh, but for me, it was a really cool takeaway because it, you know, that's along with the rest of the Covenant Sanctum. It's like this evergreen content right out the gate. You know, Path of Ascension, it doesn't matter what your gear is. It doesn't, it doesn't matter when this expand, you know, how many expansions it is from now. Bugs aside, you'll be able to go back there and still and still feel that sort of same challenge when you're playing as these Soulbinds and you're fighting bad guys or, you know, doing this whole tournament thing. And I think that's awesome. Uh, same thing goes for the Venthyr party. That has a little bit to do with item level. It'll be a little bit easier for stronger characters, but largely... Uh, it's it's something different. It's multiple activities to do that have, you know, that, that have a bit better, in my opinion, a bit better of a replay value than, say, like Island Expeditions or Warfronts, which, you know, especially with Warfronts, it, that felt like such a huge investment that was put into it, but you get very, very little uh, out of that. And I guess uh, on a close note to that, uh, Torghast unfortunately felt like a letdown even the jailer's gauntlet after after having gone through it a number of times you know it's cooler you know i think i think it's a it's a cool addition uh to me though the the, the big takeaway from that were anima powers actually i think it was cool to see like these sorts uh you know to see the team put so much investment and time into hey let's just go nuts let's just go really stupid and just give these people ridiculous powers that we know are only going to live and die in this one instance, in this one area, it's like having, it's like the whole thing with borrowed power, but super, super charged. It's like, okay, let's just go, let's just get absolutely broken with this, okay? Knowing that at the end of their play session, they're gonna be, you know, laid low and brought back down to earth, so to speak, and I'd have to deal with that. But uh, but I do like that, you know, they're, they're totally cool with celebrating just some of the ridiculousness that's possible. And I hope to see some sort of iteration of, um, you know, a, a Torghast or a Roguelite or a Gauntlet of sorts. Uh, because I, I feel like there's a lot of replay value in that. I mean, imagine there being like a Caverns of Time slash Torghast. It's sort of a hybrid where we can jump in and uh, go through like, you know, a, 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 like the Shattered the, the, the shattered Halls thing. You know, go, going through that Gauntlet with... A whole bunch of different powers to choose from and it's like all right dude go as fast as you can or something like that or you know finding a series of of, of regular bosses or raid bosses you know th those would be really cool going back to casuals though uh, or solo players you know however you want to than that uh i feel like the wow team has put more efforts into catering to that audience than they have like in a really long time almost ever i mean raiders and pvpers you know they've all had had their things to do but i feel like uh, with the different kinds of things that were offered during 9.0, 9.1, eh, not so much 9.1, but 9.0 and 9.2, uh, that there's just kind of a lot to offer and a lot of things to, you know, a lot of cosmetics to work for. I mean, 
like I felt really good getting like all like all the different colored swords and there's so much more uh, stuff that I still have yet to collect between stuff from Xerath Mortis, uh, even a couple of things in Corthia, and definitely there's like a ton of stuff for me to still get from the different Covenant Sanctums and the campaigns and everything. Uh, so I feel like there's tremendous replay value that is put into Shadowlands. Okay, maybe I shouldn't call it replay value necessarily, but uh, there's just go there's a lot that that expansion has to offer that does not need to be consumed during that expansion. There's some parts of it, of course, that are going to be easier when it's current, when there are a lot of people around, notably that jellyfish thing, like good luck to anyone who's getting it afterwards. Uh, but largely, uh, Shadowlands is a it's like a big collection playground and there's a lot of there, there's just a lot there for folks to work towards. I think Mythic Plus got a lot of love this time around. Um, I think it was good. Um, everyone's got their their different feelings about the dungeons and I can't objectively say a darn thing about it. It's like I hardly did any BFA dungeons. Some people loved them. I enjoyed the Shadowlands dungeons. Some people hated them. You know, and then Legion Dungeons were, you know, whatever. Cathedral of Eternal Night, that was a nightmare, but whatever. I I, I feel like uh, Mythic Plus was kind of a winner for this expansion. Um, a, a lot of it because it just got a bit more attention. You know, we got the Valor Point system that was put in, um, which started out kind of jank because there wasn't really anything else attached to it. But when they put Mythic, uh, when they put, added Mythic Plus score to it, there were a lot of people who were really... Uh, who were really skittish about it because now this whole social score thing was going to be an official thing, and it still is. You know, people still see it that way, and I and I totally accept those critiques on it. Uh, but when Blizzard created this whole Mythic Plus score thing of a jigger, it was mostly tied to reward milestone. Hey, you get your score to this high, you can upgrade your gear, uh, your your dungeon gear to like this level. If you get really high then you're going to get like these cool little hearthstone or these cool little teleport things. I think the biggest addition though was when they added the whole season awards. So that way it had this sort of parody with uh, PVP. And I think that's really awesome. It gave those high end players, you know, it really gave those high end players something to work, uh, something to work towards and kind of a beacon for regular folks like you and I to be like, damn, they're hell good. Oh my God. Instead of just kind of acknowledging, oh yeah, their IO score is like so awesome. whoop de doo But now there's more for these people to celebrate. And I think that's fantastic. One of the worst things to happen uh, to the WoW team, to Blizzard, Activision Blizzard as a whole, um, with the, well, with what they've done, you know, in turn, you know, what, what has happened to, to its workers internally, followed by being caught, I'm pointing that out as a bad thing. I'm just trying, just trying to say that. Uh, but from that, we also happen to see a, you know, a, a, a bit more of a push towards accessibility uh, and acceptance. Um, this has really come off the top of my head here, but uh, you know, w when they changed paintings and things like that, um, it, it was hard for me to respond to it personally because I didn't quite know how to take that I was just seeing a, a picture change you know that's like kind of whatever uh, but when they made some other moves like hey we're going to make it so that um, we're, we're going to remove uh, gender changes that's not going to be a thing anymore it's just going to be something you can alter in the barbershop I thought that was fantastic uh, along with the other things I think that was at the, I think Shadowlands was also the time when they did that with for druid forms I think no probably not but you know Kind of that, that's kind of where, where I'm going there uh, with that. Uh, also, in that kind of along that around that same time frame, that's when we got the the announcement for the male succubi, and now we have them here in game, and I think that's really cool. I'd love to see more of that. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing males being able to wear uh, female gear and and vice versa, because I mean it doesn't hurt anybody. Right? You know, if someone wants to to do that, that's 100% fine for me as long as heck as long as add-ons support it I don't mind seeing seeing uh, an add-on like a, a transmog roulette just change my male character and, and put them in like female clothes whatever that's not a big deal for me but uh, but for others it's it's not a joke 
for others, it's it's extremely important for their own identity because there are a lot of people out there in WoW and in other games that really want to express their inward selves out there in the game that they you know because they feel safe in that or they would feel safe if there was uh, that much more accessibility. So I'd love to see uh, I'd love to see a bigger push for that. I don't think it's official yet, but Shadowlands is going to mark. Uh, the expansion when we had an associate game director added to the mix. So, um, like I said, this is unofficial. I just looked at the dude's LinkedIn page. Uh, but Paul Cubit, Cubit or Cubit? Cubit. Cubit. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Uh, but Paul Cubit, uh, he was recently, seems like his, his job title changed to associate game director. And that could mean... Oh, shucks. Any number of things. It could mean Ian Hezekasas is on his way out. It could mean Ian Hezekasas is not on his way out, but could really use some help. Uh, and someone like Paul could help. It could mean that WoW is going to grow in tremendous ways that we don't quite know about yet. Um, uh, Paul's job title changed sometime this month. And next month, we're going to get the next uh, uh, announcement for you know new WoW expansion. Is it going to be massive? you know, in such a scale that it needs a bigger crew with a bit with, with an additional, I'm sorry, and an associate game director to support them. Is it going to have player housing? Probably not. But that's, the, that's the kind of, um, I, to me, that, that feels like one of the positive things that come out from something like this for others, uh, they could do with a regime change. Um, Ian has a is overseeing a number of expansions now and, uh, more than a number of folks, are ready to see him move on uh and sure i mean like, like why not i'm kind of gassed i think i'm running out of stuff but the last thing i wanted to mention something i think i should have mentioned uh, a little bit before um and this is this is definitely a personal thing for me i liked renown i think renown worked out uh really well in terms of you know like pretending that, I, that i'm blizzard okay i'm gonna pace the players a certain way how can i make this look how can i make this feel as gradual or as fun or, or whatever as possible knowing that i'm gonna pace these players anyway like what can i do you know i could i could put it behind like this insidious rep grind oh but i don't want anyone to like really fall behind so maybe i should have like a rep catch up of some sorts and maybe i'll have a rep cap so that way no one gets too far ahead and then you know, I'm sure Blizzard, through all their conversations, eventually came up with Renown as this sort of thing. Um, I've, I've spoken about this even for patch 9.2, that Renown could have been put into this patch as well. Like, instead of this this whole get to revered and do all this and yada, 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 what if they just had Renown manage the whole thing? You know, let's, let's give everyone uh, their belt thing as soon as the campaign is done but it takes renown this and then after renown this and this and this then you get the memory you know something like that um but i i think i enjoyed it because there was just like a small thing to look forward to each week there's a thing to sing my jingle for um and it it wasn't like super impactful either a little campaign quest here another follower there three you know one or two percent more stamina not a big deal um but to me that was like a really easy and accessible way to pace players without making them feel like really bad about themselves um having a weight does suck i get it but it was probably the most painless kind of weight that we've had and that's it sorry for that was a very awkward pause, uh, but that's it. That's all that, like I said, I'm gassed. That's all I have. But I'd love for you guys and girls to share what are some of the positive things that you feel have come out from this expansion. Feel free to share your thoughts or disagree. We're definitely going to disagree on a lot of things. Otherwise, like the video because I just wanted to invite you in for a conversation while sharing some thoughts of my own. Subscribe for more content and I will see you for the next thing. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.